looking at an elbow joint, here we've got an anterior view of a right elbow or an elbow model. So we can see capitulum and trochlea here. So what we've got in terms of ligaments, on the medial side, we have an ulnar collateral ligament, and that's huge. It's a big, strong ligament. There are three bands, but the only structure that's on your list is ulnar collateral ligament. So if that's pinned anywhere, that's all you need to have. It's just ulnar collateral ligament. Then we have, uh, on the lateral side, we have the radial collateral ligament, and just notice that the fibres of the radial collateral ligament are vertical. Now on a specimen, they may not look, may not be that clear. You may not be able to see the fibre direction as clearly, but if it's pinned up here, near the humerus, it's the radial collateral ligament. Now the, and the other one that you can see here is the annular ligament, which is wrapping around the head of the radius here, or at least the articular circumference of it. And the fibres here are horizontal. Now on a specimen, you can usually see that, but certainly you can clearly see that on the model. Now, please just note that the radial, collateral and annular ligament fibres do blend here. So if it was pinned here, it'd be a 50-50 bet whether it was, you know, uh, radial, collateral or, or annular ligament. So I wouldn't pin it there. Either up here or down here is where I'd pin it so that it's clear which structure I'm after as long as you do know those structures. Now, if we're looking at the anterior um, joint here, there would be uh, an anterior joint capsule just here, um, and there would be fat pads under that in these fossae. So in the coronoid and, and radial fossae there, there'll be some fat. And in flexion, in full flexion, when the coronoid process and the head of the radius come up here, what will happen is that fat will get squashed and it will be visible um, being pushed uh, towards the, the top of the joint and you'll clearly be able to see it. So it is possible to see the anterior fat pad here and the posterior fat pad in the olecranon fossa, but you pretty much need to put the joint into flexion, to s like this, to see full flexion, to see the anterior fat pad um, clearly, and likewise in extension, it's easier to see the posterior fat pad. If they were to be pinned, it would have to be through the joint capsule, so I'd have to be very clear in the question saying what's under the structure that the pin has gone through or, or something like that so that you know that I'm after the fat pad and not the joint capsule. Um, now, just to show you, there's some other structures that are not on this model. Of course, the interosseous membrane would be here in between the radius and ulna. Um, the quadrate ligament is a small ligament with uh, kind of horizontal fibres that runs in between the radius and ulna here at the neck of the radius. And what that little ligament is doing is preventing too much motion during supination and pronation. So it's running from ulna across to radius and preventing too much motion there. Now we don't actually have a specimen or model where you can see that one. It's a tiny ligament um, and it's very close up here to the joint. Uh, and unfortunately we don't have one. Now likewise the saxiform recess, we don't have one that you can see at present, sorry about that, but it's a distal excursion of the joint capsule here that's a little bit loose and just runs down, folds down here in between the radius and ulna right near where the quadrate ligament would be. Beauty. Right on.